Okay, so here we are going to be a bit ambitious and try to solve two problems with just one video. Okay, so you have only two narrow plates. Uh, let's say both of these are stationary, and you have your fluid going in the z direction as a function of x. Okay, let's keep this as x, and let's keep this the length as L, this is maybe z is equal to 0, and z is equal to L. Okay, we'll keep this as x. And then let's take a small volume. So let's take this width as delta x, and this is L. Maybe the width of this could be W. Okay, so then doing the rate of mass transfer at z is equal to 0 across z is equal to 0, you get delta x w that into phi, which is a combined uh, momentum flux, zz at z is equal to 0, and then rate of momentum change at z is equal to z, sorry, z is equal to L would give you again delta x w phi z z and z is equal to l and similarly you can also do it at the other side at x is equal to x which gives you delta sorry about that so this is w into l five x z x and then uh, x is equal to x plus delta x zw5xz x plus delta x and here there's no need for gravitational term because it's all in one so on the same horizontal distance so balancing this equation you get just take this on one side and take the other on the other side uh, because here you should divide both of them by delta x w l I'll just write that in black. Yeah. X, W, L. You can get the first part. P5, Z. Z equals 0. Minus 5. Z equal to L. Divided by L. Is equal to. And you put this on the other side. 5. X plus. Delta X. Minus 5 x z by x will develop by delta x and just take the differentiation of this okay so when you take the differential of the right hand side what you get is d phi x z by dx and that's equal to z z is equal to 0 minus z z is equal to l will divided by l now here what we do know is sorry about that so here what we do know is that 5xl which is a combined momentum flux is of 2xl plus rho vx vz now vx is equal to 0 so this term can be and similarly we have 5 zz which the pressure term comes into play pressure plus 2 zz plus rho pz vz now here this term is constant whether z is equal to 0 or z is equal to l so we can neglect that here you have a do vz by do z uh, which again is not required because there's no change in the velocity of z across the z function. Finally, that gives us only two terms, which is the pressure and the tow. Bring that into the equation. We can just have do to xz by dx gives p minus pl divided by l. And finally, here this is the equation. Now this is where we deviate into the second problem but still here it's the same whether you do 
for one or you do for two it's the same now here we are going to consider as a continuation of this problem what would happen if we had two fluids instead of just one see i put the first fluid in green color and the second fluid in blue color and this would be your dense one throw one uh, sorry new one the other would be new two okay so here now everything would be the same and we would reach the same conclusion initially um, and on solving this what we'll get is I'll just write that down you just integrate this keeping in mind that there are two different shears based on the different fluids this is to exit so one can be 0 minus pl i into x into c12 so here if you didn't have two fluids and you could have just solved with this uh, you would know what is uh, the two at the center of the liquid if it is a single fluid and you can solve for two and then you go to velocity and you solve by using any other boundaries as well as you so here now what we are going to do is we are going to consider uh, where exactly would two be um, maximum so since this is less uh, since this is less dense we do expect or less that this should keep increasing and then decrease so it should look something like this uh, sorry about that it looks something like this so it should keep increasing that means the shear stress should be zero around this point so if i were to draw the shear stress it would look something like this sorry about that Let's need a bit more angle there we go and this would be the plane of zero shear where you have your maximum velocity okay and now we can try solving this so we know at the interface of two liquids that two xz1 should be equal to two xz2 at x is equal to zero and let's say this is minus b and b So here at x is equal to 0, we can state that 2 x z should be equal to 2 x z 2. That's the case, it will be c1 is equal to c11 is equal to c12. So c1 should be the same. Now using this and using Newton's law of viscosity, so this goes 1, this is 1, i to the x is equal to p0 minus pl by l x plus c1. Mm, t is a 2 tx is equal to p0 minus pl x plus c1 okay now we just integrate this one to get the values for vz so we can say vz1 is equal to minus p0 minus pl by 2 nu l to x square minus c1 nu1 x plus c21 this is equal to minus p0 minus pl 2 mu 2 l plus x square minus c1 mu 2 plus c2 2 now here there are some conditions we can use we know it x is equal to b mu 2 is equal to 0 but x is equal to minus p mu, mu z1 is equal to 0 and we know that x is equal to 0 mu z1 is equal to mu z2 so if you use the first one you can say that x is equal to sorry about that i missed an x here we use the last one where x is equal to 0 we can say that c2 1 should be equal to c2 2 
and now using these two equations the first one will be getting 0 is equal to minus pl by 2 nu 2 l b square minus c1 nu square b to c2 I think it's a bit I just make it a bit thinner that seems okay yeah, similarly we can use to solve the other one and once you get these two you just equate for c1 and c2 and finally we will reach um, into the resulting momentum flux and velocity profiles so on equating this you will get c1 is equal to minus p0 minus pl by p 12 nu1 minus nu2 by nu1 plus nu2 and c2 would be p0 minus pl b square 2 nu1 l 2 nu1 nu1 plus nu2 so using these two you can solve um, you can just put this back into the equation and you get to exit and you also get uh, vz1 and vz2 yeah that's it thank you for watching